Ben. And I'm Dave. And today we are painting Star Wars Legion Clone Trooper Unit Expansion by FFG. Quite judgy. A little bit. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. <laughs> that was me. I got it. There we go. There's definitely shading there, guys. <laughs> I have not spent this much time for there not to be shading. There's no shame. Just kidding. Of course there is. <laughs> Topper half. Topper half. You're the Upper best. Upper half of his body. <laughs> I was gonna say. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And today we are going to be painting Marvel Crisis Protocol Minis. So Woo. we're also going to be doing a giveaway. Um, we are indeed. Yes. So we're going to be giving away the unopened box here with everything inside. But we also have an open box that we're going to go through a little bit before we start painting. So you can see everything that you can. I'm going to. Yep. Vanna White is out of the way. Ah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> it's like it was never there. <laughs> yeah, magic. Um, awesome. So you can kind of see what you'd be getting with this giveaway. What do we have first? On top, learn to play. Of course. Very important. Uh, so the most important, maybe. Possibly, yes. Besides the minis. Yes. The minis are uh, obviously the most <laughs> important. I'm sorry, but I, I would challenge anybody, <laughs> anybody on that. Okay, so 32 pages of rules, uh, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like 16 pages of assembly instructions. Oh, that's good. Johnny could have used that earlier. He probably could have. <laughs> but um, um, if you want to put it right by in front of you, I have uh, the. Oh, there we go, the overhead cam. Ha uh ha! -huh. But uh, yes, lots of cool assembly instructions, which Johnny definitely could have used. Just kidding. Aww. He didn't make a big mean to mess Johnny. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that there. So you can see some of the. All of them are unprimed. All of them need to be put together. But if Johnny can do it, so can you. Exactly. And this is really cool too. I love the bases for these. Let's stick those I under can. there. Yeah. So Easy lots of different base size there. bases for different uh, different characters, but they've all got that sort of the street texture. They've got the cracked pavement, they've got the curbs, they've got manhole covers, all sorts of cool That's stuff cool. in there, which is neat. Loads of dice. Always need more dice. Yeah. So these are uh, proprietary D8s that have uh, the different, the various symbols on them. And I will check out the rules to find out what those symbols mean. <laughs> so there's the uh, critical, which is the exclamation point. Exclamation. The wild, which is the, well, guess which one's the wild? Is it, is it the skull? No. No, that's, that sounds like a crit hit. That sounds like dead. It's a swirly. The swirly, all it's right. It's the swirly. Uh, the hit is the explosion. The block is the shield. Uh, there are two blank sides that ah. have no effect. And uh, the skull is the failure. Of course note, the skull's Note failure. that failures cannot be re-rolled or modified. So yeah, if you roll that, that's a one. I see some cool sure. artwork in there as well. Oh yeah, on the cards. Yeah, which look pretty cool. Very nice. Here we have Do -do -do. So, what hashtag are we going to use for this giveaway? Crisis uh, protocol. Crisis protocol. <laughs> it looks yes. like Leona's already chosen it for us. It's on Leona, the screen. Leona was like, "No shenanigans." <laughs> Sorry. None today. I forgot to tell you. Also, hello to everyone in the chat. Hello, David. Yeah. Hello, Walt. I Hello, there's Brian. A, there's Michael. a Michael. No, that is actually, I think, sound coming from the big TV. We are hearing ourselves. It's fine. It's good. Slightly delayed. <laughs> but yes, it's all okay. 
There are. Oh, Luna's is running in. Tip She's fixing down. the sound. Fixing the sound. So this is another more, uh, uh, more parts for the buildings. There are stoplights in here. Oh, that's cool. Which is really neat. There are also uh, street lamps, which are cool. There are in here. You also get dumpsters. You get cars. You get a taxi. So everything great. you need for a fun city scene. Yep. Definitely awesome stuff. Dave, how do I put everything back in the box exactly the same way? It looks like you've done a pretty good job there. This first, yep. that first. Bit. Yep, and then that. And by the way, I did use the instructions. <laughs> <gasps> Johnny used the instructions, and that's why he got them all correct. My big fingers, I can't handle miniatures properly. Dave, the professional. It, it's, it, is, it is true. Johnny has hands that are like a fistful of sausages. I have these Vienna sausage fingers. <laughs> Great right. Rottweiler fans. <laughs> but you know what? He really did a really great job putting them all together and priming them for us. He did, and we appreciate that. So who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who am I going to be working on today? Yeah. attention to the Captain Marvel one. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Pay extra attention. To extra attention to Captain Marvel. No. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to, um, we're looking at the, the cool paint jobs that are on the back of the Crisis Protocol mm -hmm. box, which I think were done by Dallas Kemp. Okay. Of uh, Atomic Mass Games. Uh, hey, Dallas. Um, I'm going to be working on uh, Iron Man and the Caps. So Captain Marvel and Captain America. And you're going to get done with all three of them today? I wouldn't. What I would like to, but I, I think it because they're they're all nice and bright and very <laughs> comic booky. Mm -hmm. um, surprise, surprise. That the um, contrast paints mm -hmm. from Games Workshop are going to make a like a really quick quick job of these. And thankfully for these, I've got. I need red, yellow, blue, and white is really all you need for those. Maybe yeah. a little bit of black. A little bit. So I should be able to just bust through them. Just, that's, just go. That's the plan. Magic. We'll, boop see, boop boop boop. we'll see how we go. I'm going to be work. painting Spider-Man. <gasps> What's Spidey look like? Spidey looks like this. Oh, cool. So he is, he is ready to go. He looks like he's about to fling himself off of the piece of uh, metal. There. Uh, yep, that's it. It has fallen from a building and embedded itself in the ground. <laughs> it, it's an epic fight is going on, it obviously. Is, yeah, it's definitely. a crisis protocol. <laughs> Those are very <laughs> intense words to use in a hero in a, in fighting a setting. Game. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. You're right. Uh, it's not like Marvel Sunday afternoon. Yeah, this isn't Marvel ice cream trip in the park. <laughs> that's. I mean, I'm sure Spider Man would, be would cool, also be in that. Oh, scene. totally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He'd just roll um, up his mask. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Spot on. But, but I think we could, we're going to have some fun painting it. Definitely. Yeah, we're also going to talk a little bit about line work, I believe. Uh, yes, yes, we'll come up with that, come to that question a little bit later once we get to uh, when you need to start painting those little webs. <laughs> when, I, when I run into trouble and I'm like, Dave, help me. What do I do? No, um, we'll get to that definitely. I'll have to, you have to do your best superhero impersonation at that point in time. <laughs> I don't have a best. I only have several worst. <laughs> the worst. They're all equally bad. And so, but yeah. Oh, it should be fun. It should be good. Uh, what is a question? Do they make all the different armors for Iron Man? Uh, not yet. Uh, at the moment, it's just this one, whatever this one is. <laughs> I think that's... So, oh, yeah. you put it on the uh, oh, there we go. That's pretty, that's pretty much what you see in the movie, yeah. Well, there's a lot of movies and a lot of different like the first, variants. Like the iconic, like, simple, like, first movie. Like the, his first, first red suit. Red and red, gold. Red and gold. Red and gold with yeah. blue right in the right and Glowing in the blue. Yeah, and right you have to bits. make that glowy. Glowy in the, glowy in the bits. <laughs> yeah, sure. do some OSL. We'll do that. We'll do a little bit of OSL. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, Walt, this is the only one that they make. Um, and I'm going to grab him now. Bloop. Uh, but yeah, it'd be, be very cool. I'm sure that uh, they have plans for things like the Hulkbuster suit, and um, oh, that'd be cool. And Maybe a bunch of drone suits. I think it'd, I think it'd be really sweet if they did like a collector's edition box set, which had like all the suits in it, just as a that'd be hey, really, cool. really cool piece. Yeah. It doesn't need to have like different rules for each of them. But just just all the all the different suits. You could choose yeah. your suit for the day, whatever exactly. you're feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, that'd be neat. Cool. It might be a little while because right now they're just 
putting out all the characters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I, Thor is coming up. I'm not. I'm not suggesting it's going to be like this year, or even really this decade, this new decade. But yeah, there's so much to cover from the um, Marvel universe. <laughs> I was going to. I was going to pick up something. <gasps> Where did the box go? It's over here. The open box. Yeah. Seeing as how I've got three that I have to paint, I want to make sure I've got... All the colors there? I know, I know where the colors go. I know what the colors are, I just need to know where the colors go. I have... I, I will go into this being like, I definitely know what Spider-Man's suit looks like, and I guarantee you after I get like the basic colors, I'm gonna be like, I moderately know <laughs> what Spider-Man's suit Well, in that case, let's open it up again. Let's dig down and grab those cards. I have an idea of what Spider-Man's suit looks like. Um. Okay. Now I have to admit I haven't played the game at all, so I can't tell you anything about the game itself. Apart from one thing I do know is that when you're playing with the, um, the characters, the character cards have two sides. Okay. There's a um, sort of their initial side they start off the game on, and when they lose enough um, health, you flip the card, hmm. and then their stats change, their attacks change, some of them get sort of crazier, some of them get weaker, um, things change around, but basically while they're on the front side You're of the card. so hard not to have spoilers. It's true. <laughs> In true Marvel fashion. But, um, while it's on the, the front side of the card, you can't take them out of it. Like, you can't remove them from the game. All right. They have to go down. They might be stunned. They might be um, sort of huddling in a corner. But you have to wait until you get to the other side to, to finally get rid of them. But let me find... Maybe probably at the back. Question okay. from YouTube. I have to figure out where YouTube is now. <laughs> Those minis look cool. Do you know what scale they are in? Uh, the small kind. Dave, what scale are they in? <laughs> they are a little bit, they are a bit different. They're um, about 35 mil scale. Um, so they are a little bit taller than um, sort of a human in, for example, Games Workshop armies. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are more true scale rather than the heroic scale that Games Workshop uses. Which is kind of fun, having heroes in a true scale. <laughs> it just means that the, the hands are a little bit smaller, the heads are in proportion, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think it's 35 mil scale. But uh, yeah, so there we go. But there's your Spidey, so you can tell where all the blue Excellent, it's exactly going. where I thought it was. Hooray. <laughs> I, I can see that pants. some new people joined us. Would you mind letting them know what we're painting again? Yeah. Oh, not a problem. We are painting. We are painting protocol, crisis protocol. I can get the words in the right order. <laughs> <laughs> uh, crisis protocol um, Marvel minis. Yep. Marvel crisis protocol minis yeah, from Atomic Mass Games. There's an order. The words. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is. There is. It's a crisis. There's a protocol to follow. <laughs> it's Marvel. Less Go. Marvelous. Yes. <laughs> um, Indeed. But yeah, so, I am painting Spider-Man. And I'm painting Iron Man, Captain America, and Captain Marvel. This will probably be the first time I actually finish something early and then I'm like, oh, I should have picked more minis. Well, but, I'm, I'm hoping you do finish it early because I have a feeling that I won't finish these, <laughs> these all in time. So it would be very handy. See, that's what uh, happens as soon as, as soon as, uh, if I would have gone and bitten off more than I could have chewed, I would have been completely overwhelmed. I would have had yep. like half of, I'd get this far. Right. But because <laughs> I've only chosen one, <laughs> yep. I'll speed through it. When you said you were just choosing one, I was like, ah, oh, I've probably made a mistake. <laughs> horrible, horrible mistake. There's but, a, Question for you, Gretchen. Are That's you going to do a silver or black spider on his chest? Oh. Trying to figure out where this question, question. is. Facebook. 
Oh, it scrolled down. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, this has a black spider on his card. So I'll probably do a black spider just to keep with it. Um, and also, I don't think we actually have silver silver. Oh, we have some silver. We do have silver? Yep. If you wanted to. But. I don't know. I feel like the black is more comic booky. Like it pops more in that. Yeah. And it's also what I remember on the suit. Right. Um, and I can't actually... I know I used to watch a cartoon, a Spider-Man cartoon, but not like the 60s one. Right. 60s, 70s, whatever. Whatever was around in the 90s. <laughs> I watched that. Right. That existed. Of course, all the new movies have been uh, super popular. Yep. Hmm. This is fun, trying to work out where the, the various pieces go. I wish I was blank from Twitch says there was a Fox Kids Spider-Man cartoon. Okay. That's In cool. In the 90s? I think it ran with X-Men. That's possible too. I did watch X-Men, the animated series. Right. When they were all like teenagers having problems. I watched that. I watched a lot of Justice League. I watched a lot of Batman. I didn't realize there were other Robins though. Like I was just, I was just a kid watching yep. cartoons. And it was just Robin. And I just thought Robin was just Robin, no matter what. And it wasn't until way later um, that one of my friends was like, no, you know there's more than one Robin, right? Mm. The world was like, blown. No way, no way. It's always been Dick Grayson. That's what I thought. Yeah. But I was wrong. Me too. We'll survive. That's I was okay. very pleased to learn there was more Robins. That was a <laughs> highlight. I was it was like it was like they were like, I can show you the world except Gotham. Right. So what we got here. Okay. Now on on this for the sort of the yellow parts, the, the gold parts really. I'm using um, Nasdreg yellow, one of the contrast paints, um, because it gives a bit more of a sort of that gold feel, a non-metallic metal kind of gold, because it has a brown um, shade rather than the, the, yellow, uh, the orange shade of the A and in yellow. Uh, Trying to be so delicate. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, a, it's definitely important to do that with the, with the contrast paints. And in this case, I'm starting with the lightest paints, lightest colors, and working up. I feel like I should have started with red. I thought it was a bold choice, starting with the blue. <laughs> but... It's been very clean so far. Yeah. It's been very tidy so far. Um, and everything is going to have that nice little black webbing right. uh, to clean up any lines that are particularly bad. But you know what? I'm glad I started with blue because yep. it's before my hands get shaky. Right. Okay. That's true. Good point. So. I'm also glad that you started with, uh, with the blue because I wasn't sure which one I'd need to use. <laughs> But that um, this is a very good blue. The, the, the that is Talisar blue. Yeah, it's very nice and vibrant. So that one's definitely going to get a get a look in. There we go. It's making the big choices, Dave. You are, and I appreciate it. Definitely good. I I will say though, I'm not being super care. I'm trying to be super careful with the spider on his back. It. I'm glad it's going to be black. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get my my brush quite in the, all the little raised edges there. Right. But uh, David says I grew up on the '60s Spider-Man, so to me he always has a deep, mature voice. All uh, right. So he's not Tom Holland. Or um, Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. Or Toby Maguire. That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> Toby we can just, we'll go through all of the all of the different Spider Men. Let's so, let's yeah. do that. <laughs> Who is your favorite Spider Man? Um, 
Uh, I like Tom Holland. I think he's pretty good. I think it's... Uh, I, I like that. I like the way they've got the character out with him. I um, definitely felt he felt more like a high schooler yeah. than the other two. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, Tobey Maguire's was in college. I think they upped his age in that, didn't they? They did, they yeah. Did. Um, but I definitely enjoyed uh, the Tobey Maguire version as well. Okay. So. Mark, on the back, the spider should be red. Don't tell me that. Oh. Not on the back of the card, on the back of the model. I'm, I know, but I'm looking to see if it has a thing. <laughs> yeah, I think you're absolutely right, Mark. Yep. Have you painted the back panel blue? Yeah, but it's kind of messy. Oh, well. We're going to make this work. Yeah, it's we will. Fine. It'll be fine. I can, take some, <laughs> I can take a little bit of an opaque white and just touch up and then... Runs right over it. Yeah. yeah. All good. For sure. And in this episode, we'll learn about fine lines and what to do when you can't do them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about practicing. Uh, speaking of practicing and crisis protocol, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I sent some photos through to Leona oh, yeah. of some stuff that I got up to this past weekend. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I think we can show those. Um, so. Long-term listeners will know that I am uh, a big fan of a convention called Adepticon, which is held in uh, Chicago each year, or just outside Chicago. Uh, they are... Um, oh, that's a picture of me. Um, <laughs> but the setup, of course, is that... Uh, so one of the organizers of uh, Adepticon, Hank, Hank Headley, had about a dozen of us from across the country over to his place over the weekend to paint scenery. Uh, we, were, we got to use a lot of, uh, did, do a lot of airbrushing, so I got to brush up on my airbrush skills. Um, and here you can see me painting Walker It's terrain. cool, Dave. <laughs> Pardon? He's cool, Dave. You're cool, Dave. Cool, Dave? Yeah, you're cool, Dave. Okay. You're airbrushing. I'm airbrushing, okay, yeah. yeah. Anytime you airbrush, you are cool, Dave. I'm cooler, okay. But you notice I didn't have the hat. That's okay. Turned around. Um, but <laughs> I do have a, Kind of a strange expression on my face. I'm not sure what I'm about to say, but uh, something cool. Something cool, hopefully. Yep. Cool, Dave. But we uh, we painted uh, terrain for about 36, 38 um, uh, war cry tables. Mm -hmm. We painted terrain for 36 uh, crisis protocol tables, uh, and probably for about 20, 40k tables. 24, 40K slash Horace Heresy tables. All in all, we painted, over the weekend, we painted 700 pieces of terrain. Um, so in this photo here, we've got Jeff Jenkins, uh, Rogue Shader is what he goes by on uh, Instagram. Uh, Jeff has been a guest on the show a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff spent the weekend working on close to 80 cars, I think, from the, Marvel, the Crisis Protocol box set. Um, so check out that, that photo there. That's so many. Yep. It looks like a sale lot. <laughs> yep. So all of them were uh, all of them were assembled. Uh, other other teams had come in previous weekends and uh, done all the clipping and the assembly mm -hmm. and the priming, that sort of thing. So we sat down. Jeff went through and painted the base colors on all of the cars, mm -hmm. and then myself and Anthony Rodriguez, who's mm -hmm. uh, pirate monkey painting. Uh, so we sat down and we painted all of the windows black first. And then Jeff went through and uh, sprayed the blue on all the windows. So that's six windows per car. Wow. So 480 windows. It's a lot of windows. Um, and then uh, they got handed back to myself and Ale uh, sorry, um, Anthony. And we went through uh, and painted the headlights, the tail lights, the license plates. Uh, all of the yellow cars there are taxis. So they all have a little taxi sign on top. Why so we would paint you all of those. Give yourself so much work, but they all look great. It was pretty amazing, yeah. They're going to look fantastic on the table. Uh, so we did all those. And uh, my friend Mark Rayley uh, painted something like 72, 76 uh, buildings what? from the set. So 30, 36 sets plus a couple of extras. So, what amazes me is that you have everyone all helping out and everyone doing different things, and yep. the finished product doesn't look mismatched. 
No, no, it's it all. It looks um, very coherent. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is the this is the second year we've done it. Um, so last year we were dubbed the Adepticon Spray Team. So we went out as as the Spray Team, um, kind of like the A Team. And then we, uh, at the end of the weekend, once the job was done, we scattered back to our respective places. But uh, yeah, and uh, we've all we've all done a lot of terrain building and painting and that sort of thing. So we all get in there, we work out what color schemes we're going to do, um, all that sort of stuff, and we just sort of get to it. Everybody picks a job that they want to work on, and and we go for it. But yeah, so you, there you can see some of the, the stoplights, the street lights, the dumpsters. It's kind of funny. We arrived. Mark and I arrived. Uh, actually, Mark. Jeff, Andrew, and I arrived on Friday, uh, Friday night. Mm -hmm. Everybody else had already arrived on Friday afternoon. We got to Hank's place about 11 o'clock, 11 p.m., mm -hmm. and we just got, got started. Mark picked up a dumpster and said, oh, I've got an idea for this, and he starts, <laughs> starts spraying this dumpster, and we go, yeah, that looks really good. And so we, we worked through, and then as he was doing it, I was like, oh, this little symbol on the front needs to be painted a little bit. So we painted all of the dumpsters. Teamwork. And I, I painted the little symbols with a brush um, on Friday night. So, but it was really cool. Yeah, the, the attention to detail on that terrain is, is amazing. They've just done a spectacular, spectacular job. Um, unfortunately, we were in, each day we were probably, we probably started around nine o'clock and we finished up around midnight. That's a long day of painting. That is a long day of painting. That is an impeccably long day of painting. Yes. <laughs> um, but it was, uh, it was definitely good, and um, we're really stoked that we got... So over, over 700 pieces of terrain painted for the weekend. And if you're going to Adepticon, you'll get to see that on the, uh, on the tables. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so if you spot any of the Adepticon volunteers, thank them very much for their help. Uh, David asks, badge of chrome in hand, Dave? Uh, yeah, that was a chrome, actually. Um, the, uh, so with a sort of an event of that sort of size, uh, Badger um, provided a whole ton of paints, all their style and res line. And uh, I think we had about, there about 20 uh, airbrushes to choose from. Already kind of grabbed an airbrush and worked with that same brush for the whole weekend, and then there was a, a very significant sort of tear down and clean the clean the brushes out, sort of shift at the end. But uh, yeah, there was uh, definitely definitely a lot of a lot of work and a lot of fun. We were well fed as well. Uh, we'll have to have to say that. Did he that. just, as you were painting, did people just feed you? Feed you? Yeah, little uh, grapes. No, no, we we did we did actually get to take a break, um, but Hank's wife Diane um, fed us very well. I'm a huge fan of Diane's uh, biscuits and gravy. That sounds really good. Yeah, it was awesome. Now you're making me hungry. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, yeah, definitely a great weekend. Great to hang out with those uh, those folks, and do a lot of good for a, an awesome convention. But uh, yeah, I was very impressed by the Crisis Protocol terrain. And make sure excellent. you use the Crisis Protocol hashtag in order to win. Indeed, win yourself a starter set. Yeah. Which is awesome because it's got uh, it's full of characters in there. Who's in Who's in the box? Who who's in, in the, the box? box? Uh, let's find out. Well we have box contents, <laughs> ten character miniatures. No, it doesn't explain wow. them back there. It doesn't just have a list of them all. Uh, Here. So I see. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so like okay. I see dog. See. Dog. <laughs> I, I could like. You could read I could through attempt, those. Yep. Attempt to nerd credit. Um, so we got Spider Man. We have Baron Zimmo. We have Black Widow. We have Captain America. We have Captain Marvel. We have Crossbones, we have Doc Ock, we have Iron Man, we have Red Skull, and we have Ultron. Excellent. It's, uh, it's kind of fun. I, 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 I'm not a comic book guy. I haven't read a lot of comic books at all. Um, most of my comic book knowledge is sort of, uh, comes from 
the movies and the shows and from friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have no idea who Baron Zemo is. None Neither do whatsoever. I. So chat, please uh, enlighten <laughs> us. Please huh. tell us. Who is Baron Zemo? And like, while you're at it, Crossbones too. Uh, Dave, did you see um, Civil War? Uh, I did see Civil War, yep. I think Crossbones is in Civil War. Okay. He's in like all black. And he has like a crossbow. And he has a, like a skull face. <laughs> and he goes like, crossbones. Does he do that? Yeah. Okay. That is exactly it. You know, are you sure you weren't in that film? Well, now that you mention it. Or was that just cool, Dave? I think the NDA has run out. I can talk about it now. <laughs> Wait, you even laughed like I wasn't telling the truth. Disappointed. But cool. No, it's good to know that I can, can track him down. But uh, yeah, the Brown Zemo. You yeah, know, I've. Oh. Uh, I've read some comics. Uh, I, I read. I like reading comics. I'm the type of person I'll get like hooked on like one little bit and then I'll just go forth. Or I go down a rabbit hole. Like my friends will be like, "Have you read this?" And I'll be like, "No." And then they'll keep handing me comics. <laughs> so I won't actually know what I'm reading, but I'll get really invested in a specific part of the story. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm invested. And they're like, well, read this. And I'm like, okay. Um, nice. But <laughs> as far as like growing up with anything, I didn't grow up with comic books. I grew up yep. with all the animated series and whatnot. Um, if the whole Robin debacle didn't bring light to that. Right. Um, <laughs> Um, Someone said seems like more villains than heroes. I think it's even. It should be even. I think Black Widow. I think it's five five. Counts right. as a. One two three four, five. Is Baron Zemo a bad guy? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Five. So the so rest yeah, of them are, the, are Avengers. So you've got, um, yeah, Red Skull, Doc Ock, Ultron, Crossbones. So in Crossbones, it's got to be evil, right? Because he's got that skull. I feel, I feel like it would be. It means he's a baddie, right? I'm sure it, I'm sure it does. <laughs> You're so, you have judged this man. I'm confident. <laughs> For sure. Totally judged. You gotta have some indicator. That means I can tell immediately without having to check his, uh, his actions. That's a villainous color scheme you have going on. <laughs> yes. That's my favorite thing in Disney, is that you can always tell it's a villain because it's purple or lime green. Right, yep. Like those are the or colors. Purple and the... lime green. Oh, that and means they're really bad. <laughs> yep. Purple, lime green, and black. And black, that, that's the colors of a villain. Or that. Um, is that Ursula? That's yes. Ursula, that's, that's Maleficent, that's. Um, Scar has the lime green associated with all his dance sequences and his eyes. Even Capta, Captain Hook, he has that like maroon. He jacket. has the, the dark red. The, the dark red and the super light like blue that you see with like Hades are two. Oh, yeah. They're like secondary villain colors. But let's be real, Hades wasn't super villainous. Uh, like in general, and Hook kind of was, but I, I, he was kind of bumbling. Yeah. Oh yeah, someone said Jafar was red. Jafar That's was true. red and black. Red and black. Red and black are also, if it's red and black, then you're either a villain or an anti-hero. There's no in between. Like. There we go. So she's coming along. Yeah, nice so and quick. Good. Let's make sure I get the red on the right areas of cap. It'd be bad to mess that up. Oh no. Oh, yeah. yes, I didn't actually just flick paint where I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> Many Excellent. paintings do you do. What kind of nerd party is this? The worst kind. I was going to say the best kind. Oh, okay. Best Why you got to be kind. like that? Because uh, I'm the a terrible person. The best kind. <laughs> The kind the with only nerd. kind. 
The only kind, the kind with nerds. Hooray, nerds. Well, it's one where I'm sure that the conversation would have been much better if instead of me here, it had been Rick. Because Rick would know all of these things. But instead, he's in Texas at the moment on the Rick Rolls America tour. That he is. Which is pretty cool. He was in Houston, I think, over the weekend. And this weekend, he's going to PAX South. So that it should be cool to fun. check. Yeah, be cool to see how uh, how that all goes. So it's in San Antonio. I one day I'll go to a warm convention. A warm convention. <laughs> That's what I was telling Leona last time because <laughs> every for the past couple of years now, every time I've attempted to go to a convention, it's been very cold. Right. Well, I was um, whenever somebody says to me like, "Oh, how was the how was the weather?" I always say, "72 and indoors." <laughs> Because it is always I was indoors. I was explaining to my boyfriend that this is Louisiana winter. Oh, right, okay. And he was like, that's not right. Uh, Louisiana doesn't get this cold. And I was like, it's 47. <laughs> it's, it's 47. It's freezing for Louisiana. No, Louisiana gets down to the 30s. Yeah. yeah. Um. There we go. It's a good start. But, uh, cool. I think... Um, it might be about time oh. to uh, check out some minis from the group. Do oh, we have uh, some minis from the group, Leona? Yes, we do. Real quick, someone was asking what you are painting. What oh. we're painting? We are painting Crisis Protocol, right? Marvel, Protoc Marvel, Marvel Crisis, Crisis Protocol. Protocol. <laughs> now I'm just, every time I say it, I'm going to be like, Protocol Crisis? Crit There's a crisis and a protocol. Just say M MCP. Which characters? I'm thinking Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm working on uh, Cap, Iron Man, and Captain Marvel. Dave's being an overachiever. I am. I am completely. <laughs> now we can look at minis. Okay, cool. Good enough. Uh, yes, ready. Ready to begin. Chat says that we're the best chill out uh, <laughs> G-rated. <laughs> G-rated chill out videos? Excellent. Why, thank you. Uh, we pride ourselves on that. Cool. So first up, uh, we have a dwarf from Alexander, Dane Deepax. Ooh. That's totally a dwarf name. That's a really good dwarf. That, that <laughs> feels not, like, I feel like there's two kinds of dwarfs. There's right. like the little gremlin-y dwarfs. Okay. That are, they, they go and they're kind of there to be a party pooper. Okay. Um, and then like, Dane Deepax. Dane Deepax. He sounds like he has his own show. He does, actually. He sounds yes. like <laughs> he's going to give me a speech, and I'm not even going to care what we're fighting anymore. He's going to teach you how to use that axe. He will. Because I bet you that's an axe. Like, he will. <laughs> In a very... <laughs> yep. Um, but yes. It would be disappointing if Dane Deepax had a, had a hammer. But anyway, um, talking about the painting of the miniature... Um, I'm liking it. I think the uh, having the blue mm -hmm. in there is working well with all of those warm colors. Definitely. Got, uh, because there's a very sort of orange feel with the, the <laughs> bronze and the Dback brass. sounds like a food product, like stock cubes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you insult mm. Dane Deepax that way? And what, what kind of food product would it be, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, <laughs> yeah, looking very good there, Alexander. Nice work. Oh my goodness, what are these? Pestigors. That looks creepy. They are creepy. So Pestigors uh, would be Nurgle um, corrupted beastmen. So they're kind of Sounds like twi something twisted I by chaos already. don't want to run into. Yeah. But uh, the fact that they have the numbers on their uh, shoulder pads, uh -huh. uh, it says to me these are the ones from Blood Bowl which is Games Workshop's, like, fantasy football game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know so what that sounds like a job for? What? Dane Deepax. Dane Deepax. <laughs> Dane Deepax would totally be a, a lineman on, the, uh, on a dwarf team, without a doubt. But, uh, yeah, these, these guys look terrifying and creepy. That and they do. They've got a, it's a... It's the like flesh a and the bone kind of... 
Yeah. Like your brain's trying to put it all together, but it's so twisted up that it just, you're like, no. Yep. You've done a great job, Andrew, for doing this uh, very creepy scheme. Looks great. Nice work. Oh, Chris. Ooh. So I guess Chris painted up some Space Marine characters. Uh, this one is a chaplain. Space Marine chaplain. I think this is one from um, one of the starter sets from a couple of years ago. But uh, yeah, chaplains wear all black armor with skull motifs. So he, this guy in uh, crossbones could sit down and have a talk about uh, fashion for a little bit. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> but no, this is looking looking good. I like the way that um, Chris has broken up the the leather of the coat mm -hmm. with and the leather of the um, like the holster for the his pistol. Yeah, it's got those different uh, the different browns going on. And it's so smooth. Yeah, yeah. Chris has been doing a lot of a lot of great smooth work lately, and I love the um, the work on the the haft of the that rod's called a crozius. That uh, the little purple. Highlighting every little little bit. Yeah. Nice work there, Chris. Oh, that's really good. good one. Oh, cool. Those are some fun colors. Chris, again, uh, Layla Mordlin, 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 Mordlin. I'm not Layla? sure. Layla, Layla Mordlin. Layla. Let's go with Layla. But Chris, <laughs> uh, yeah, Layla is looking very cool here. I'm liking the the blues, that blue and the purple. We're working really well with the um, so that the orange mm -hmm. and that green. So you've got that you've got two of those color contrasting color groups working. But yeah, looking very nice. And I love that red uh, the red crystal at the top there, top of the staff. Good job. I haven't seen that many before. Looks very nice. Oh yeah, Chris um, oh. Chris Jackson posted this up. So, uh, sculpted by Yasashi Kyojin Studio. Um, so I'm not sure, did... It's like a gator person. I'm not sure, Chris, where you got this from. Um, did you print, uh, I think it might have been a 3D print. Yes, it was. Yeah. I cool. just couldn't fit that all. Couldn't fit that all in. Um, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, the sculpt is fantastic, but I think your paint job as well looks, looks awesome. It's so super realistic. on the top. It yeah. has that slight shine to it without being overly glossy. Yeah. That yep. really makes it look like a reptile hide. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, looks, uh, that's what I love about it. Nice work there, Chris. Great paint job. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Oh, wow. That's a, um, so I'm gonna say that's a, is that a WizKids Elemental? Yeah. Yes. I like the little bits of grass popping out of the stonework. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like the it's coming up out of the ground and lifting the tufts with it. Or that it's just been a lot, like how sloths will grow right. things okay. on them. Like it moves so slowly. If he's, not that he would move slowly, but because he's uh, been out in the elements and he is part of the elements. It right. It's kind of what I... Yeah. Rock Gollum. Rock Gollum? Ha. Huh. Rock Gollum! <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, that's Rock Lobster, my bad. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Mm. But uh, no, that looks uh, looks very very cool, Clive. Nice one. Okay. That was from Mars. Yeah. Oh yeah. More of the Earth elementals. That's the the same elemental, just a, a different uh, different approach. It looks uh, looks very cool. I'm liking the uh, the crystals on this as well. Um, but again. <laughs> That's the perfect placement of the tuft of hair on the, the one on the left. <laughs> Check out my armpits. So, but yeah, that looks uh, looks great. Nice work. Daniel Man. Some mausoleum terrain. That looks what see the spooky color scheme. Spooky color scheme for sure. Yeah, the um, the purple and and blue. But that. I feel like it's like the state, like I would love to explore that. If I saw that, I'd be like, there's gonna be some ghosts. Yep. But I'm not gonna die. No, true, <laughs> true. <laughs> like, that, that's what that color not... scheme says to me. Like this is gonna get spooky, but in a Scooby-Doo kind of way. Might I, get cursed though. I don't know, that blue makes me think magic. I was gonna say in a, in a kind of a Disney sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine lining up for two hours to go and 
<laughs> to be able to go through the, through this ride. <laughs> but no, it's I think it looks uh, it looks very cool and it's very pretty. Yeah, you can see on the on the column of the statue mm -hmm. and the side of the um, the one on the right, mm -hmm. there are some uh, little white flowers. Spots. Yep, white white roses. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's very ethereal and like. I wouldn't be scared of running into monsters that would kill me. I would be very scared that I would be cursed. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking great there. Uh, oh, the Asha VTOL, vertical takeoff landing Ooh. from WizKids. I did not know that WizKids did uh, crazy sci-fi vehicles. How about there, David? Yeah, I, I didn't it's realize wild. either. What range are they from? Let me know. I'm Let curious, us. but uh, no, they check. definitely look cool, and I love the scenery that you've got there with it, the little tents next to the big uh, compound. But yeah, looking nice. Doug has finished his royal guard. Very cool. And you can see on the base, um, the base there, he's used some of the Agrella Earth, which is on the oh the crackly bits. Yep. So that's what, one of the texture paints. So you just sort of slop that on, let it dry. I used to have something similar for my nails. All right, okay. Yeah, fun fact. There we go. <laughs> Not all the time though, right? No, no, just no. Just for no. special occasions. Well, I, whenever it was for fun, I was like, that's a cool effect. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But uh, no, these look uh, look great. Um, I like that slight sort of sheen to the, to the helmets there. Nice. Oh, yep. So after we were painting the Star Wars last week, Drew wow. showed his clone army progress. That's so many. It is. It's crazy, isn't it? And each of them has a different um, different scheme, I think. Yeah. Maybe the, there might be two rows there that it, with the blue that's the same yeah. scheme, scheme. And I think those are the 501st. Um, but that's all I can remember. I can't remember the names of the others. But they all look very cool. Nice work, Drew. Oh, Fabrice. Some TND minis from Gale Force 9. I can't remember his name, but then I get to paint that creepy yeah. hands guy. Yeah, we actually painted that one <laughs> on the left. Yep. So that was a that was a few months ago. Yep. But, uh, looking good. I like that um, kind of the, the werewolf on the right. Is it a werewolf or a werebat? Face is kind of squished up. It's like a werewolf. Yeah. Looks good. Nice work, Fabrice. Very cool. Oh, Garrett's been painting some Bone Reapers. The Ossiarch Ooh. Bone Reapers. Looking very cool. So that heavy cavalry up on the sort of the top left. Yeah, I'm liking that scheme. I think that, uh, that sort of very bright um, greenish yellow. Is a, is a great sort of ethereal look. Nice one, Garrett. Good work. Jeff needs to decide on the color of her hair. I actually like it how it is at the moment. To be I honest. like, yeah, that's nice. It's a nice kind of powdery blue purple. Yeah, yeah. I think that's working for me. That looks, uh, that looks cool. I like what you've done on the base as well. Looks like you've built up. Uh, some, f some floorboards, yeah, from maybe from coffee stores or I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, looking uh, looking cool there. Yeah, I'd keep the hair as it is. Yeah, and a shredder from Zombicide. It's looking nice. I love that purple. Really nice work there. That's very the blending is very nice on yeah. the the swooshy bits. The swooshy bits. Yeah. That's the technical term. It for is them. a technical term. Anything in the lower third of a cloak is called a swooshy bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm liking that. The uh, and that with the sort of the dark pants and the the dark sort of tunic underneath it was making all of that silver mm -hmm. pop, looking really good. Nice one. That's, That's all, for, all now. for now. Cool. Make sure that if you want to be included with all of the miniatures during those segments, and we'll have another one later, that you are part of our Facebook page. Indeed. Which is super easy to find. Just type in painting happy little minis. Do it. Do it. Do it Nothing's now. Nothing's stopping you. Do it now. 
Uh, Unless you're disappears. at work, but then wait till you get home. It's <laughs> Dave Moffat said those uh, those little planes, the VTOLs, were from the Mac Warrior, Mac Warrior Clicks game from the mid oh. mid aughts oh. to the early te early teens. Cool, very nice. And then uh, Dave and David are talking back and forth. I'll leave you guys to it. <laughs> But uh, yes, that's cool stuff. Oh, I just remembered as well, um, as I'm working on cap here, so you know how he was sort of developed in the, in the 40s uh -huh. to be the super, superhuman and spent a lot of time in Europe um, fighting the Nazis. Yeah. And uh, then he was lost and frozen, and yes. Um, <laughs> then they brought him back, like seventy years later, uh, and he looked the same. Yes, because there's uh, a super serum and freezing. Super serum and freezing. Yeah. So um, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was before Christmas, I'm not sure. Uh, we talked about um, a crazy photo that a friend of mine had found. Right, looking the same, being, yeah. yeah, okay. So I'm not sure if if Leona, Leona needs to track that down. Because it was, of course, the, it was the least important photo that I can send through. But, uh, yeah. I thought it would be, f that's cool, no worries. I thought it'd be <laughs> funny to, to show while I was painting Cap. And, of course, I call him Cap because I know him. Obviously. Yes, because as this photo will show, I was developed in the 40s <laughs> <You're> <laughs> with super serum and then frozen for 70 years. Maybe not. But yeah, I tell you, these uh, the contrast paints are definitely great for this purpose. I feel like see. they pick out all of the nice little highlights for uh, the muscles in a lot of the suits. Yeah, definitely. Make definitely. that definitely easier. This is a tough part. Um, so as I'm going through doing this, I think we talked about it last week, was um, sort of hand positioning. Mm -hmm. And you can see that I'm anchoring my hands together with these fingers, so they're connected, and then both of my wrists are touching the table, so they get as stable as I can while painting this lovely thin line. That's me right now edge. as I try to paint everything but his mask. Right. <laughs> You forgot to pull them up? Yeah, I don't know where they are. <laughs> okay. In the purpose, in the All right. <laughs> Next week, then, maybe. Next, Next week, if we have something appropriate. That's fine. That's fine. I believe in you, Dave. Yeah. But I think when people see the photo. But, uh, yeah. This is nice and tough on this tighter uh, circle, getting in there nice and close. But. So difficult. Yeah. Dave says Captain America is an advocate of Granny's apple pie in Thanksgiving. Yep. Wait, where are all the commas? Oh, Granny's apple pie. I was wondering if it was Granny's, comma, apple pie, comma, and. <laughs> I'm also an advocate for grandmothers. So lucky. My hand slipped and I plopped red. Right but it you... went where it needed to go. So we're all lucky. good. <laughs> lucky. Lucky. Who's that superhero? That's Domino, isn't it? Yes. Domino is always super lucky. Domino's superpower is luck, 
that's it. That's all. Yep. Okay. That's a really strong superpower to have, though. It is. It is ridiculously strong. Okay, and then lots of red here on Iron Man. So what paint colors have you been using? Uh, so far I've just used two. Just the two? Just the two. Me Should too. The, hmm? <laughs> Said me too. You as well? No. Yeah. Excellent. Yep, just the uh, Nasdreg yellow for all of the gold parts and uh, Blood Angels red. The contrast paint for all of the, the red parts. Now, I've been using the Flesh Terrors Red because it's a little bit darker and I think okay. it makes the blue pop more. Yeah. But I might go back and try to do a little bit of highlighting with something slightly more orangey, just on the little top of his head and top of the muscles. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I uh, decided to go with the Blood Angels Red first and I'm thinking that if I do need to sort of make it a little bit darker or get a little bit more contrast. Um, I can just, I can use, go back and hit it with some Flesh Terrors Red. Maybe thin it down a little bit. But otherwise, it's going quite well. I'm going to start to shake up my Talisar Blue. It really is a good superhero here. blue. Yeah, definitely looks good. And the cool thing as well is that it'll tie all of the models together. It'll all look like an Avengers team. The most important part of being an Avengers team is the coordinating outfits. Oh, definitely. I mean, what's the point of being on a team if you don't uh, have a uniform? Says, Dave, who makes the paints you're using? Uh, the paints that I'm using are uh, from Citadel, uh, Games Workshop makes these. So, uh, for example, the uh, gold that I use is the contrast Nasdreg yellow. So these are really uh, highly pigmented uh, washes um, that um, are just very cool, very quick to use. A lot of fun, you can get some very vibrant colors over white. Uh, because they are heavily pigmented though, um, they aren't like sort of a normal wash where um, if you make a little mis sort of a little mistake as such, or if you go over onto another another section, it's not a huge problem with a regular wash. But because these are so heavily pigmented, you um, you're gonna have trouble putting another color over the top of that. Oh yeah, it just immediately sort of smooth. Hmm? Said so it just immediately just sticks. Yep. And some parts of that I feel like are really useful, like the uh, the dragon that I did that was rainbow fish themed. Okay, yep. Um, being able to overlap like that with the contrast paints allowed me to get a watercolor effect, which mimicked the book. Right, yep. Um, because as soon as I put something down, there it was. It was stuck, even if it was overlapping. But with something like this, where I'm trying to get really clean lines. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit more. Uh, or a little bit less forgiving. Yes. Yep. Um, you paint these kind of like a layered wash. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. So at the moment, uh, we're just painting them, essentially painting them on like a base coat, or at least that's, that's what I'm doing here. You're mm -hmm. doing something similar. So I'm trying uh, to get nice. Clean edges, yep. so that I can go back and make everything pretty. Now at the back here, I know that he's got some different, um, so some different areas. There's probably some uh, quite a bit of silver back here, but I don't have a picture of his back at the moment. So I'm just going to go with a lot of red, <laughs> and then when I put it on the spinner at the end of the show. We'll just all pretend we aren't seeing it. Okay, you have your marching orders. So all of these uh, models are from the Marvel Crisis Protocol uh, core set, starter set, uh, which is available in your friendly local game store right now. 
and um, awesome value. How does the, do you know how the gameplay works? Um, I don't. I don't uh, exactly. I, I, it's alternating, alternating activations. Um, it's kind of the extent that I Anyone in the it. chat, have, has anyone in the chat played before? I'm curious now. Yep. I'm sure somebody has. I'm confident. But, uh, yeah, alternating activations, the, uh, when we we're going through the, the box, we saw the, uh, the D8s. So, all eight-sided dice for, with all of the, the lovely symbols on there. I'm not sure, I should have checked, but uh, it might be an opposed dice roll sort of game. That would make sense or if you try to do something. But, um, but I can't be certain. There we go. <laughs> Everyone's I've seen other people play, but they're not here right now. <laughs> Oh. Me too. Yes, at the uh, the spray team event over the weekend, um, we didn't play at all. We just painted. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of stuff to get done. So sometimes I like playing more than uh, painting, and sometimes I like painting more than playing. I think it all just depends. Depends on the mood. And I think one of the important things to remember is as far as uh, sort of getting value out of your, your miniatures and the hobby is if you spend time painting them and time playing with them, you just get loads more entertainment than just playing or just painting. Double the fun. Double the fun, exactly. It doesn't cost you any extra. So, from that, that sort of standpoint, I always like to try and play with them, with my models. Don't always get the chance, but. Yeah. I could take. Dave. Pardon? Hey, Dave. Can you talk about our question? Getting those tiny oh. little lines, Dave. Oh, the, the tiny little lines? Sure. We I'm can, about to need that advice. <laughs> we, we can get to that. <laughs> Certainly. Uh, one of the, uh, the questions that we had this week uh, from the Facebook group was, uh, what is a good brush for thin lining? Uh, and so that would be for painting fine lines, uh, I guess either in between armor panels or uh, if you're painting sort of text on a scroll or uh, some sort of freehand pattern or uh, pinstriping on a Gaslands car, that kind of thing. And loads of different, uh, actually I say loads of different ways, there's no, there's no real loads of different ways. It's just the important thing to do is practice. But the, sec uh, the, the most important thing when you're talking about doing um, painting thin lines is uh, having a, a brush that's going to release the paint well mm -hmm. and release it well through a very fine point. So uh, my favorite brush to use, uh, kind of Favorite size brush to use, regardless of manufacturer, is a size two. So you can see on my. I find if I go too small and I try to do thin lines, it's almost as if I, like, curse myself. I don't know. Right. Something something happens. Yep. It's uh, it can be tough, but it, it's a lot of it's uh, sort of practice there. So I've got a Winsor and Newton Series Seven, number two. You can see there. Um, which gives me a brush size like that. So obviously this one looks kind of big and can hold a lot of, uh, lot of paint. Even you put it up against 
the model. It's quite large there. But because it has that nice um, fine point on it, you can put some paint in. Uh, if it's nice and thin paint, like at the moment here, I've got some uh, black uh, contrast paint, the Black Templar. You can get some very fine or some thick lines if you want. But uh, if you're going to be painting lots of thin lines, uh, try to spend a little bit of time beforehand, just do some practice. And you see what I'm doing there? I'm, I've anchored my hand, my small uh, pinky finger mm -hmm. uh, is touching the, the uh, palette there and I'm making sure that it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't move, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't work. It still works. I'm just making sure it doesn't move. I'm grabbing it with my other hand here and just pulling with those, just using those three fingers, or two fingers and a thumb, to create those, those thin lines. But just do some practice um, painting thin lines before you approach the, the spot on the model. Um, some people might feel more comfortable with a smaller brush. And one that I just that I happen to have here is, uh, is the Citadel Artificer layer brush. So this one here from the Windsor & Newton Series 7 is a um, Kalinsky Sable brush. Um, so natural hair, natural fibers there, and will give you that, a, a well-made brush will give you that nice fine point all the time. The artificer layer brushes from uh, Citadel are also natural fiber uh, brushes. I'm just going to put a little bit of moisture on there. But you can see next to it, it's a much smaller brush. So if you don't feel comfortable using a large brush yet, that's fine. That will come with time. But you can take a smaller brush and paint as it comes to those sort of points. Paint fine lines as well. So the, um, the only downside of the, the smaller brush is that it doesn't have that big belly on it to hold all of the, the paint. So you'll have to reload your paintbrush a lot. Uh, sorry, reload your paintbrush more often than with a larger brush. Uh, so, yeah, best brushes for thin lining. I'd always advise to get some um, natural hair brushes, um, Kalinsky tables. I always talk about those because um, those brushes will keep a fine point, and that's really what you need to um, to be able to paint thin lines. And when we get to the point, how much time have we got? Oh yeah, so soon. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get there. We can have a look at um, painting the um, those black lines on Spidey's. Um, I don't know. It, it's mostly costume. just. I mean, I feel like the contrast actually sits into all the grooves of the webbing quite it, nicely. It's sitting pretty well. Um, yeah, definitely. So the spider and his uh, his eyes. Will like have all to the be. the line around his eyes. Yes, because that's yep. black. Yep. So we can do that as well. But yeah, make sure your um, paints are thinned and they're so that they're going to flow from the brush well because you don't want them to be sort of clogged or drying or um, goopy because they'll, um, they won't give you that fine line. It'll be like a dotted line. So that's what I would recommend for thin lining. Um, you're all welcome. And now quickly, I'll have to jump into my Talisar blue. Yeah. Check how bright that is. Amazing. Yeah, because that's, that's what I use. I know. We're matching. I'm still, still surprised by how bright it is. Usually I go for much more <laughs> muted colors, so it's kind of freaking me out. That's what I'm saying. You'll be okay. You'll be good. I'll be You'll able to be manage fine. it. I believe Thank in you. you. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. But I do need black. Yeah, I, I, do you have um, the black? So. Okay, so we've got that. Oh, you, you want to? This, this is for the, um, for the. 
It's and for the spider in the front and his uh, his uh, mask. His okay. Little domino mask. I'm also going to suggest because um, for this one I was just painting thin lines on mm -hmm. a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to recommend. More opaque? Yeah, I mix the two. So th when you're thinning down that the uh, Vallejo black there, rather than just using water, using a little bit of the black contrast paint will be uh, very helpful. A, Do you want to use this one? <laughs> Do you want to use a right teeny tiny one? Right, I'll try the teeny tiny one. Okay. We'll, we'll get, I'm gonna. We will see your advice in action. Excellent. I hope it works. Me Fingers too. <laughs> but it is. Uh, it's quite so cool seeing these come together so quickly. And knowing that they're going to rock around on a gaming table. Kicking some butt. How's it going? It's going. It's going. It's going. This might be the one time where I actually needed glasses. Right. I have those as well if you want to borrow those. I don't know. I would have to stop painting while you did that. <laughs> Chris, they're on my face. Yeah, I don't have a spare set of glasses. But, uh, no. That was one of the, the fun parts with the uh, with the airbrushing on the weekend, airbrushing all of that terrain. The um, for the base coat, I didn't need to wear my glasses. It was just like, there's the airbrush. There's a general area that the terrain is in. So I didn't close my eyes, but. Uh, yeah, it was only when we got into the, the later stages that I had to get stuck in. It was definitely good. One of the things that we did while we were painting was we watched a lot of really bad 80s movies. That sounds fun. Including an incredible film called Megaforce. Tell us more. Pardon? I said, tell us more. <laughs> tell us more. <laughs> about Megaforce. So Megaforce, for those who haven't seen it, uh, imagine, um, imagine an unlicensed uh, G.I. Joe movie. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but no, it was, uh, it, was, it was if somebody had said, um, okay, Mattel, Go and make a movie that we can hang a um, toy line around and we'll give you not a lot of money for costumes, and, but, but we will give you a whole bunch of... Um, enthusiasm? A whole bunch of enthusiasm and a whole, a whole bunch of uh, massive cargo planes. So they spent a lot of time in the like salt flats somewhere, oh my God. taking off and landing in these enormous planes, and then driving these uh, ridiculously painted um, dune buggies out of them. But the most spectacular part was the sort of the final scene, where the the leader of Megaforce, Hunter. Uh, it's like his parents just knew what he was going to be. What he was going to be, exactly. Exactly. They like, were... this, this boy here is a hunter. And, uh, yeah, he was, uh, he, they'd taken off, they, like, the rest of Megaforce had taken off in their enormous cargo planes, and Hunter had been left behind because he'd, he'd fallen off his motorbike. So he got, he got back up on it and started riding as fast as he could towards them. And then he pressed the button 
There's a big red button on his handlebars, so he pressed that. What other button would he and, press if not the big red one? And these, these wings folded down from the back of the motorcycle. Bike? On his bike. bike. On his bike. Uh, it was amazing. <laughs> the wings folded down, and then he pressed the second big red button, which uh, started the jet engine. And his bike took off. I was flying through the air towards the so all of his friends are, are up in the in in the air on the back of this uh, enormous cargo plane uh, the ramp down at the back and they're all like looking at him and cheering and urging him on um, they're flying they're probably like by that point they're probably like four or five thousand feet in the air <laughs> and he's just racing towards them on his uh, on his bike and because it wouldn't have sort of filled as much time, uh, or wouldn't have wouldn't have looked as good if he was just just riding it for like three minutes to get into the the cargo bay. He ba- he did a barrel roll. Of course. It was amazing. Amazing. That's incredible. I could not tell you what the movie was about, but. Everything you need to know is in that description. There is a movie called Atlantic Rim. A- Atlantic. Atlantic Rim. Rim. Oh, right. Okay. No, because this is the knockoff Walmart Kmart version, <laughs> and it oh, is no. glorious. Oh, yep. so wonderful. Yeah. I would highly recommend. <laughs> awesome. Let's check that out. Dave, there's a question for you on oh. YouTube. Sorry, uh, question. Uh, what do we get? Uh, you guys need some handles. We have some handles here, but I'm just so... I forget they exist. I'm so used to just <laughs> I always handling put the thing. Them out. But uh, <laughs> what is it, Dave? Pinstripes lowriders? No, I don't. It would be cool if I did, but I don't. Uh, Dave said... Uh, don't you find that the Windsor and Newton Series 7 dry very quickly compared to the um, Raphael 8404s? Um, uh, I haven't found that. No, I've used the, the Raphaels as well. Um, haven't really found that, Dave. It, it might be a thing, but no. Uh, and then David said, uh, using Talisar Blue for laser barrel glow on my battle mechs. That's good. It's a, it's a super vibrant blue, without a doubt. I think it's looking pretty good on Captain Marvel here. And then Walt asked, Dave, what was the first miniature you ever painted? I hope you don't mind me saying, but I forget. I remember It was a mine. long time. It was yeah. the first time I was on the show. First time you were on the show? Yeah, because cool. no one told me what I was doing. They just... <laughs> Right. I just showed up. Awesome. Hi guys, I'm here for work. Paint a mini. Paint a mini. What? what are you I was doing like, there? okay. Yeah. I suspect, Walt, that it was a dwarven adventurer for my D and D party. Um, but that was before I got into, well, before I got into wargaming, and my first mini when I was getting into wargaming was a, um, actually a, a uh, Gretchen from. With an eye, Gretchen with an eye, uh, from Space Crusade. So, yeah. almost ready. Um, those were my first, well, I can, only, I can only assume it was a dwarf adventurer when I was like 10 or 11. But, uh, I think it was probably 18 when I painted the, uh, the Gretchen. What was your first mini, Walt? There are times when I'm jealous of people who, have, who still have their first miniature that they've painted. Like yourself. Do you still have it? Do I still have it? Uh, maybe I still have it somewhere. Did it get lost in the move? No, I have no. them all up on my, uh, I have a little shelf. And I have them all up on there. But I've given some of them away. Because right. uh, sometimes if we're at a convention, um, I'll have 
some of the minis out that I've painted. Okay. And I'm not a good business person. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody says, wow, that's really cool. And you go, would you like it? <laughs> wow, what do you do? I paint minis for it, but would you like this name? I am, because I've done it with, <laughs> I'm so bad, guys. So I have, whenever I've been at other conventions for anything artistic wise, whether it's painting minis or whenever I've done my own art at uh, anime conventions, I'll just give stuff away. Um, like That's I'm, not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I'm there for the love of the thing. So anytime, like there's, I, I'll keep the ones I really, really like. I just won't put them out. But right. particularly when it's like kids, I'm right. a sucker. Yeah. I'm a sucker. There is a family that came by and the, the little kid was telling me about how they're just getting into D&D &D and they're like so excited and all this other stuff. And I'm like, what do you like, 10 dragons? Would you just, here, have dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Live your best D&D &D life, child, farewell. Uh, this other kid came by and was talking about how he couldn't find a certain mini for his campaign. Not even to me, just to his yep. friends. He was like, I don't know who this person is. Right. I don't even know what painting happy little minis <laughs> is. And I'm like, oh, you need a thing. Yeah. I happen to have painted one. I have it with me. It's mine. It's free for me to give away. You need this. Take, Take it, it now. Um, but yeah, I am, I'm really bad at that. I've given so much out of my sketchbook because not even things for sale, just like I, I paint because I, I have fun painting. So cool. it's not like I, I'm keeping them for any particular reason. I don't have an Etsy shop. I, so I'll just be like, oh man, you like that? Take it. Cool. And all my friends are like, Gretchen, this is why you're poor. Gretchen, you're... <laughs> You're making it harder for the rest of us creators. <laughs> and uh, that's cool. That's nice when you're able to do that. Yeah, it's a fun time. Definitely feels good. Wow, I didn't realize the the sort of the strap setup mm -hmm. for. Are you learning caps. costuming things? I am learning costuming things. Just the back of his uh, back of his armor, because at the front it looks like it would just be like a little black backpack kind of strap. But no, there's like all the straps go to different places. <laughs> I'm sure it's completely uh, like screen accurate, but he's ready for Captain America school. Yeah, it's wild. I think it, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm kind of feeling that this maybe this is a little bit too bright for. Captain America. For good old Cap. Yeah. I think if I get a little bit of time, I'll come back and do some, some extra shading with one of the other contrast blues. But for getting them uh, table ready, this very definitely uh, works just fine. Oh, Walt answered your question. Oh, first monster was a heritage fantasy tree herder, 1978. Or a heritage fantasy dwarf. Cool. Wait, were they made in 1978 or did you paint them in 1978? Or both? I guess I'm going to guess mine was probably 1984. Probably. All right, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah, Minnie's round two. Let's do ding, it. Ding, ding, fight. Ding, ding. Round two. Okay. Oh, Joel Coronado. Oh, that's that was very cool. Pretty. Trying out a new backdrop. I like okay. the highlight on her knee. It really makes the pose stand out. Yep. It's a very swanky pose. It's good. There's a lot of uh, a lot of triangles going on. Yeah. In the composition of that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Looking, uh, looking very cool. I like it. Where's the model from? Curious. I'm going to guess Reaper. Because the, the face has kind of a, um, like, bone o'clock kind of look. Yeah, it didn't say. Yeah, I'm going to guess Reaper. But, uh, but the painting on that is uh, lovely, Joel. Yeah, I think the, that red dress looks um, very cool. It looks like it's got a, got a texture to it. Kind of like velvet. a yeah, yeah. I was thinking of velvet for sure. 
It works really well with that uh, the blue bluish green of the corset. Nice work, Joel. Looking good. And the black backdrop looks uh, very cool. Oh, June mug. Let's paint it up. Gold Arm, Male mm -hmm. Barbarian by Reaper. This has got a very uh, God of War feel. Yeah. yeah. From everything I know about God of War, which is the the big red stripe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. But uh, no, looking good. I'm liking the fade on the uh, on the axe. It's looking nice, as well as the the stripe. But uh, yeah, looking good. Looking good, June. Very nice. Kicking ass minis, a sample piece from Dungeons and Lasers Kickstarter. Ooh. Painting dungeon walls. Now I'm wondering if these are doors to a crypt or to a privy. <laughs> I'm hoping. One door tells the truth, one door tells only lies. Which one's the privy behind? Because <laughs> I gotta go now. <laughs> no. Um, very cool. I like in the um, the the bricks are yeah. the different colors made out of different uh, different mixes of clay. But yeah, looking good. Nice one. Michael's been oh the shambling mound, shambling mound from Wizkids. That's the one that I painted at uh, Pax Unplugged with Jason oh, from uh, Rollsmith. But uh, yeah, looking good. I like in the way that the those toadstools on top that you've painted in red are popping really nicely against that green. Very cool. And the mixes of the, the browns and the greens and, the, and that, sort of that very, almost very bright yellow lime green through there. Looking really good, Michael. Nice work. Oh, Michael is uh, in the Lost Dwarves. Looking nice. Mm, those look scary. Yeah, I wonder where they're from. I don't know, but the uh, dwarf in the middle. I'm not sure what's going on. Is he? Does he have a? Is it a mask, like a metal mask that he's got over him, or is he? Or is he? A, or is he an evil dwarf? So he has very dark, gray skin. What are they? Are they the Durga? I think they're Durga. But uh, yeah, they're looking good. Very nice, Michael. Good work. Oh, Josh was working on this on his stream yesterday. Yeah, that was with the glow. Yeah, it does look uh, it does look very cool, doesn't it? That's a um, from the Kukulkani range of uh, minis from Dark Age by uh, Come On, Come On Games. They unfortunately haven't done anything with it for the last couple of years, but. Uh, the minis that were in the range are still still fantastic. But yeah, it's looking great, Josh. Can't wait to see it finished. Oh, speaking of Rick, there's Richard Ankney. Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> what a nerd. But check out that uh, Deep Cuts Pit Devil that he painted down at, uh, I think that was at Coral Sword in Houston. I believe that's where he last was. Yeah. And uh, I think it looks awesome. I think uh, you've done a really a great job there, Rick. This might be one of my favorite miniatures that you've painted. Might be. No, it's definitely cool. I'm looking forward to seeing your next one. Oh, Robert's been painted up, has painted up Zarbag's Gits. So these guys are a um, goblin warband from Warhammer Underworlds. And uh, yeah, they look great. Very <laughs> nice. I'm painting up a whole bunch of uh, Goblins at the moment for a commission, and there are a couple of the models. Actually, one of the models that's in here, you can see one. Um, so it's on the bottom row, uh -huh. uh, second from the left. Mm -hmm. So that guy has a he has a helmet that is a, like shaped like a moon. Mm -hmm. So it comes out from his jaw, and then sort of his forehead comes over. I think it's an awesome metal moon mask, and uh, on his back he has like a a little brazier full of uh, glowing coals. Mm -hmm. And that thing that's in his hand there is a branding iron. Oh, so it's been heating it up. up. Yeah. yeah, just like that's that whisper spoke. That's terrifying. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah, running around the battlefield with the, yeah. 
a brazier on your back. You just know that the hot coal is going to bounce out and go down your, like, down the back of your shirt. I wouldn't like it, but uh, no, they look fantastic, Robert. Nice job. Oh, Ryan has painted some more old school fun. Check out these models. These ones would be metal. Old school metal miniatures. They look fantastic. That, uh, that guy, I wonder if it's a, a cleric swinging a mace. It's the back guy in the, in the back? Hmm? So the guy in the back? No, no, on, just at, at the front there, in the armor. Uh -huh. I'm not sure, because you, know, you always saw, whenever it was a mace, it was like, cleric. <laughs> Or it could be Evil Paladin. But uh, uh, looking great. And I love that skeleton to the left. Yeah. Yeah. That looks good. yeah, it looks awesome. Nice work, Ryan. Good one. Oh, and Sean. He bore the Cyclop. That looks fantastic. Yeah, I love that eye. <laughs> <laughs> he looks so fed up. Just he does. Ugh. <laughs> My arm's getting sore holding this rock up here the whole time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, looking good. I think, um, yeah, the ha having the, the leather wrappings on the arm, mm -hmm. or, uh, you've got that nice, so you've got lots of yellow, yellow and orange in there, where there's not the yellow, you don't have that yellow in the skin tone, so they're standing out nicely against the, against the skin, even though they're a similar um, value. I guess. Um, tonal, they're similar tonal value, but they are, they're popping because of the different uh, colors in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, looking good, Sean. Nice work. Stacy has painted up Reaper Miniature Giants. These are looking cool. I love that one down the bottom left. That looks like a dwarf. <laughs> yeah. A big dwarf, yeah. And uh, of course those blades are just that comically huge video game swords, but, uh, but no, beautiful work on those. You can feel the heat coming off them, off those giants. I like how they almost look smoldering in the blades. Yeah, yep. That looked great. Nice work, Stacy. Oh, Steven's done, uh, oh, a new 3D print. He's finally got painted as a purple worm. Oh, hey. Woohoo! Our friend, the purple worm. We do love ourselves, purple worms. <laughs> yep. Did you paint the purple worm around the same time I painted the guy with the hands? Might uh, have been. Might have been. Not sure. I'll do that again. So people can remember oh, the yeah. miniature. It was. Yep. Yep. Cool. But no, looking good, Stephen. And I like the, the backdrop you've got there as well. Very cool. Nice work. Oh, Teddy has painted uh, this crazy, um, what was I saying? I say? It's like crazy wizard. Button? Says, I'm stuck, wizard. what else yeah. does he need? What else does he need? Hmm. What I was thinking when I saw this, I can't remember if I typed it on the post, sorry Teddy, I might not have put, typed it there. But what we attempted to do is the, um, so the purple that you've got in that, in the undershirt, there. Um, I'd be tempted to bring that down into the blue of the the robes, or bring the blue of the robes up into that undershirt. So a little bit of extra highlighting or some shading, just to tie those two parts together. Because at the moment that sort of reddish orange of the waistcoat is cutting it off, almost making it look like two separate pieces. Yeah. But I think if you can flow those two together, um, that'll help. I think we're having the um, like that white hair, that whitish gray beard and hair. Mm. And the style of the hat gives it a very much the, um, like a low pan kind <laughs> yeah. of look. Like a, a stereotypical um, sort of Chinese Kung Fu master. Mm -hmm. But otherwise that, that's what, that's what I'd look at. But uh, looking good, Teddy, nice one. And Brett, Brett Urquhart, uh, base to Harry the Hammer. There's a, uh, a classic Games Workshop character that appeared on the front cover of either the first or the second edition of Warhammer mm -hmm. called Harry the Hammer. He's a chaos warrior with a 
this big hammer, surprise, surprise. Uh, and then uh, for the, I think for the 30th anniversary of Warhammer, they uh, re released a, an updated version uh, where he had this cool elaborate base with all these things that he'd hacked apart. So looking forward to seeing the rest of Harry go on there, Brett. Yeah, now you've shown us one. We're going to be looking out for the whole thing. Yep. We need to see it all. See it all. That would be cool. And now, back to Cap. <laughs> and make sure if you're just joining us, we are painting minis from you Crisis. Can do it. You can do it. Start, start with Marvel. <laughs> Marvel Crisis Protocol. Woohoo! And you can win your very own copy of the starter set, uh, which looks a lot like this. I'll get it right in a second. I was thrown because core set was it's not on the same orientation as the name <laughs> of the, the box. But uh, yes, your very own set of the core set of Marvel Crisis Protocol. I need to turn it back around so I can see the characters. But... Uh, Hashtag crisis protocol, right? Hashtag crisis protocol in the chat, whichever chat you happen to be in. And uh, all of those minis that we've uh, shown off today from various folks uh, have come through our Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook, uh, which you might be, if you're in this chat over here, not this chat over here, um, head over join the group and uh, start posting pictures of the cool minis you've been painting. If you have any questions or thoughts or suggestions or you've got techniques that you want to show off or techniques that you want to learn, um, loads of people in the group that can help you out with all of that. It's definitely cool. So I think, actually uh, get like a whole base done today too. Yeah? Oh damn, I forgot about the bases. Three bases? I can do that. <laughs> it's because I got greedy, right? Nobody is going to feel sad. You're still going to get more done. Yeah. And then I could get done on three in the amount of time that we. That's just practice, though. Um. Don't need that one. Looking for a good flesh color. There we go. Hey, Thomas Roach says hey. Oh, cool. Hey, Thomas. How you doing? Welcome to the show. I think Thomas just joined joined the group uh, yesterday. I could be wrong. Might have been the weekend. Dave, you're supposed to have everybody on point, in, locked, ready to go. Locked away? In your brain. Have you seen my brain lately? <laughs> I'd be a little alarmed if I saw your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it's been a little bit scattered. Just a little bit? Just a touch. Just a scooch. So, Gretchen, what are you doing for your base? So for my base, I am trying to find something that looks properly dirt colored for all of the kind of dirt bits from the debris that has been uh, kind of sloughed from whatever battle's going on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all the official words, slogans, <laughs> and things. Uh, but I've used the Blood Angels uh, red contrast paint on the brick to get into all of the um, here I can move it there to get into some of the more like knobbly details on the brick and to also make my life easier. And then I have used the D&D &D dungeon stone color and I might uh, grab some metallic of some kind from Dave to make it look more metally. Uh, I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. I don't know, because this right here is also going to be um, more of a metal, and I don't want them to be too metallic-y. Right. 
You don't want to be um, too sandy. So I'm probably going to water it down a little bit and then go over it. So it has a little bit of that more metal sheen, but it's not taking away from Spider-Man here. And then I'll add black around it and make it look all polished and nice and pretty. But hopefully these colors will play off of those colors and they will look like a nice little... Yeah. That would be a good crew. Yeah. Well, what did you use? Did you use this one? Yep. The, okay. Dungeon stone. Cool. I'll save that for the, for the basing. Uh, on cap here, he's got he has a, uh, a nice range of... Um, sort of straps, webbing around his outfit. He's got the, his belt with all of the, the pouches there. He's got his uh, the straps around the back here, or around the, over the shoulders, so he can uh, slide his uh, shield onto his back. I'm going to go in quickly with some white here and touch up some of those areas where I've got blue over on, uh, blue onto it. Just so that the uh, I'm going to use some snake bite leather contrast paint for those straps. That'll be everything will work out quite neatly. And then it's just fine details for everybody. So a little bit of highlighting here and there, getting in some metallic paints. So I'm going to work out exactly what I'm going to do for um, the hair on Miss Danvers. <laughs> I'm not sure just yet. I'm going to make it look awesome and amazing, like normal. Fiery. Oh, it, it will just, just it supposed do it, to be Dave. fiery? It'll look awesome and amazing. You think I should go for that fiery kind of look? Okay, I can do that. Because you could do that for her eyes as well. Oh, I need to... Uh, I wasn't prepared for that. Oh. Okay, I can try it. But if it doesn't go well, I'm going to blame you. Okay, let's muck uh -huh. around with that then. And start with the. Start <laughs> yes, with Carl. Hair. Hashtag crisis protocol is a thing. We are going to give away a starter set. Yep. The crisis protocol core set from Atomic <laughs> Mass Games. Tom says your brain is fine. My brain is fine. Yeah. Okay. He hasn't seen it lately though. Have you seen it lately? <laughs> I still need to find it. I'm asking seriously because it's it's been gone for feels like a week. <laughs> um, What's a good color for like construction dirt? Construction dirt. Um, Thinking ruddy skin. Like I feel like it's lighter because it's like mixed with clay and whatever. Oh, you want whatever, you want like a brick dust. Kind of thing. Of, yeah, something something's gonna have a little bit of red in it, so it like makes the blue pop out. Nothing too cold. Nothing that looks like mud. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> grab the magical the magical box uh -huh. and grab you some red leather. Ooh. Uh, and there we go. <laughs> I feel like every time you give me a color, like pressure's on, make it look good. Nah, yep. I feel like All it right. magically <laughs> looks good. Okay. <laughs> That's much better. Okay, and so I'm gonna use snake bite leather for all of the all of Cap's webbing here. But I think um, these minis are also beautifully detailed. I just realized that I've been pushing my palette paper around. It's not square anymore. Um, <laughs> all these minis are so detailed that you could spend a lot of time working on each one. And I think the one I'm excited about seeing um, really well painted is probably Captain America. Because when people get the sort of the reflection on the shield, mm -hmm. when it has that. So at the moment on mine, it just looks fairly flat. It's like flat red, white, and blue. But when you have those little um, sort of sheen, shiny markers, it looks uh, looks fantastic. But uh, actually, just one other thing I just remembered. I think I can say something about it. I'm pretty sure it's been <laughs> it's been revealed. But 
uh, at Adepticon this year, uh, Atomic Mass Games are running their first painting competition Ooh. called The Worthy. And yeah, there are three categories. There's a single, single miniature, uh, a diorama or like a duel, which is two, uh, two models facing off against each other and uh, like a team, superhero team or a villain team, which is like between three and six miniatures. So um, that would be very cool. If you're interested in painting up these guys uh, and gals, then, um, and you're coming to Adepticon, get some painted and enter in the competition. Awesome. It would be very neat to see. <laughs> Every time you get me a color, an angel gets its wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. There we go. Uh, okay, so. okay, that's nice and quick. It looks like that's worked. So what was the event, Pardon? Dave? The Adepticon event? Uh, at Adepticon. Um, I, think, uh, I think Adepticon have announced it. So if you head to the Adepticon Facebook page, uh, you'll see um, an announcement there about the Worthy. So it's the Marvel, uh, so Atomic Mass Games um, are running the, that painting competition. Uh, for Marvel Crisis Protocol, which is, uh, which is very cool to see. And I think over the next, um, next few weeks, uh, Atomic Mass Games are going to be teasing things like the, uh, the trophies and, and that kind of stuff, which will be cool. On the back of the shield here, I'm going to paint the, paint the straps um, with the snake bite leather, and then I'll come back when I do all of my uh, metallic colors and paint the inside of it to look like vibranium. Got 10 minutes left. Plenty of time to paint the inside of this like vibranium. I knew I should have just picked two models. <laughs> knew it. Knew it. I will have a completed one. Yep. I feel like I can get this all done in 10 minutes. That's just you bragging though, right? But Check I'll, it I'll out. Have a complete Check one. it. Maybe. <laughs> all Shush, good. Dave, for once in my life. I no, no, I'm, I'm, I think it's going to be cool. I'm also excited that, that Johnny gave me all the really basic uh, bases. <laughs> like there's a lot of flat, there's not a lot of additional yeah, things to paint on. Lot of I'll probably um, flex some more dirt and dust around. Yep. After I paint the uh, the metal bit, and because I highly doubt all of the dirt would just so conveniently plop only <laughs> <laughs> only on only certain on, areas. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> to paint straight lines, hold your tongue out to the side. Oh. Yep. Whatever concentrating face you need to do. If you haven't made a concentrating face before, I recommend you check out bass players in any band. When they're getting really into it, check out what faces, oh, yeah. they, faces they make. My favorite is the drummer. Drummer? The drummers always look like they're having a bang in time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Excellent. Like the bass player is serious. But the drummer is just oh yeah, like dancing. It's great. Yeah, dancing while sitting down. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about that. I feel yeah. that. It's definitely a thing. I'm gonna steal back the dungeon stone real quick. Go for it. Paint some of that metal. Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Oh, you need some, I uh, need a metal? You want a silver? Yeah. Okay. Give me a sec. And we're almost there. <laughs> Stay on target. I feel like we need like elevator music. <laughs> for the last 10 minutes? Just for the last 10 <laughs> minutes. That would be handy. We could do that. Luna, can you make that happen? 
Yeah. We could do that. It could be elevator music. It could be there we go. dance music. Dance Ethno music? Rave. Yes. Might be a little bit distracted by rave music. Some metal? You want some metal? Nah. Might be distracted by it. <laughs> I'm not sure what I need. Some classical? Yeah. Bach? Wagner. I do love Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> Something big and bold. Honestly, you're saying this, but all I imagine is Flight of the Bumblebee. Ah. Uh. <laughs> right. Um. That could work too. We'll find out. The owner will get it ready for next week. <laughs> yes. That'd be cool. We need like the not quite Jeopardy theme music. All right, just slightly off. That would be good. Cool. Oh, Walt says just don't play us off like the Oscars. Okay. So we're there. Carol doesn't need anything else. Doesn't need that. Inside of the shield. Someone put the Jeopardy theme. Oh, right. Yep. I think that'd be good. Okay. So I think it's possible if you've got uh, got a bit of time. You can sit down for four hours, you can bust out four of these models. The cool thing as well with uh, the ones that we didn't tackle, so um, Ultron is essentially all silver with uh, splashes of red, so that would be fairly quick to paint. Um, you could do Doc Ock with uh, very much a similar uh, approach with the contrast paints for his uh, bright yellow and green outfit, but Black Widow, Red Skull, Crossbones, all black. Well, not all black, but mostly black. So you can prime them black, give them a quick dry brush, and uh, you're well on your way. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy? Yep, indeed. Oh, Cap's belt buckle is silver. Gotta get that done. These bits on the back. Well, it's come together pretty well. So, do we do we have any information on when the um, the Black Widow movie is going to hit at all? I don't know. They keep talking about it. Yeah. I know that it's gonna happen. I just don't know when. I don't know when. Oh well. Look at that. No, okay. That. So okay. May first. Oh, May first. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yes. This May. Cool. This May. This May for. Coming to you. Is it just called Black Widow? It's just called Black Widow. And it has like a weird, you know, red thing. You have the Black Widow symbol? Yeah. The, it's an hourglass? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Cool. <laughs> I can tell. Loving it. There we go. Almost. Hold on, hold on. I almost have the whole thing done this time, Leona. And I won't have the bases done. If I don't touch wet paint. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. You're going to do the victory lap? No. Oh, you're doing the victory lap uh, yeah. now. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
I'm the one who won't have the victory lap done. I'm attempting to, but Gretchen it's will not be the winner. Be super clean. Okay, and let's see if we can get a little bit of uh, done. A bit of glowing eyes. Is that going to work? Let's see. I'm going to get so much paint on my hands. Yeah. Is what I'm going to do. <laughs> but awesome. that's pretty on brand for me in artistical things. So. This is true. It's not on the mats. Dave, chat says uh, you should cosplay Black Widow. Button? The chat says you should cosplay Black Widow. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funnier. I am way less athletic than, than both Black Widow and Gretchen. So. But I tell you, I do like the feel of one of those suits. <laughs> Just kidding, I've, huh. never, I've never actually fallen. So. I did the thing. It's completed. Time, oh. two minutes left to spare. <laughs> it's not super messy either. It's actually it's a, yeah, fairly clean. Cool. Okay, so I didn't get the bases done, so I apologize for that. But there is Captain Marvel. Oh, did I just miss? <laughs> oh, I hate that. The closed cam shows every small, tiny little fleck of yeah. any space we missed. Yep. So beautifully well. And the other thing that paint does is when it, when it contracts, mm -hmm. it can pull away from a certain area. That's what I'm going with anyway. <laughs> Science! Science is what ruins my painting. Yes. I just spotted another bit. Oh well. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Her head's not important. It's fine. Oh no. She's coming in. Coming back yeah, in the yeah, shot. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Captain Marvel. And. There we go. Wish I actually had some web. Like. Oh, to, to shoot, shoot out of it? Yeah. That would be cool. Like just a little bit of web going boop. Probably do that with hot glue. Yeah, yep, could definitely do that with hot glue. That would look good. Okay, and there he is. Tony Stark. Woohoo! So that one was the simplest of the three that I worked on. Because it was really just gold. But yeah, now I can see where I've overpainted with silver. <laughs> <laughs> Oh well. I'd say now looking and at it, underpainted with some looking of the red at it up and, there without the natural light kind of bouncing off of it. I'm like, yeah. hmm, I could have done with a little bit more highlighting. That would have been like well, I, th I think it would have popped a little bit more. Yeah, but you can still do that. Is the thing? Oh yes, yes you can still I come could. back and do that. So it's going to be fine. And uh, yeah, these are really beautiful minis. Uh, they're all from the Marvel Crisis Protocol box set. <laughs> The core set. Yep, and we are giving games. away an unopened, unpainted, ready to go core set. All you have to do is last minute hashtag crisis protocol. Yep. And be part of our Facebook group, obviously. So join that. See For sure. See. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So thanks very much, everybody, from uh, for watching today and for. Uh, Jumping in. Oh, I didn't realize it was Johnny who said it was funnier for me to cosplay. That's my boss saying that. <laughs> Thanks, boss. And on that note, I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store.
Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.